Today I have a Q&A video for you. I haven't done one in a very long time. I recently asked you for questions. Today I'm going to give you answers, so stay tuned. <music> Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community posts on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. Let's jump right in. I have categorized, tr tried to somewhat group the questions together. Some people left multiple questions, which I appreciate, so some of them overlap with other things. I'll be as organized as I can, but there will be a little bit of jumping around. The first question happens to be from Yota Style. She has several questions. Where do you hope to be in 10 years? What piece of jewelry of a luxury brand would you love to have? By the way, I'm looking over here at my computer. And what is your least favorite luxury brand and why? So first question, where do you hope to be in 10 years, my next video will actually be somewhat connected to a tag video that Winnie BLV tagged me in, and it's about my handbag collection in 10 years. I think Kat L started that. So I'm gonna talk about the 10 year thing in that video and get into a little more detail about that. What piece of jewelry of a luxury brand would you love to have? I still want something from Chanel. I think what I want are earrings and just simple little CC earrings, not big ones, small ones. I either want just plain like flat silver ones the most plain you can get or I want something with a little bit more detail in it but no stones or pearls because those are notorious for falling out. I've been casually looking at them probably for a few years and just haven't found the right pair to get yet. Plus they're so expensive it's hard to justify those prices but it'd be nice to have a pair that I can wear with my Chanel bags which all have ruthenium hardware. I've come across gold earrings that I like but the gold earrings won't go with my bag hardware so I need to have them in the ruthenium silver tone. What is your least favorite luxury brand and why? I don't know because I don't think about luxury in that way. I don't think about the ones that I dislike. There are a lot of them that I don't pay any attention to. Is there something that I dislike and is there a reason for it? The first two brands that are coming to mind are Prada and Dolce & Gabbana. I know Dolce had some issues. I don't know what exactly happened, but I know like Cassie Thorpe has talked about how she has sworn off that brand and she will never buy from them or promote them and something happened. Prada, the thing about Prada is Safiano leather, which is one of their big things. To me it looks cheap, but let me qualify that by saying it looks cheap because so many cheap manufacturers of handbags have made cheap bags that look like Safiano leather. So when I think of Safiano, I think of the cheap bags. I don't really think of Prada. I'm sure they're better quality, but I don't like how the Safiano looking leathers wear over time. So I, I don't know. I just have a bad association there. Probably not Prada's fault. Next question. This is from Lisa Mahan. Pretty sure you've mentioned growing up in Texas, so how come you don't have an accent? I've been asked that before, particularly when I moved to New York and other people in my school program were surprised they didn't have an accent. I think it's because I live in a big city. People don't have accents so much here. Houston is a melting pot. It's the most or one of the most diverse cities in the country. And I'm trying to think if I even know anyone who has an accent like a southern accent, and I don't think I do. Mary of Lumi Level Up has a question for me. What is one of your dream bags that you love but you'll never buy, and why? I mean, the first thing that comes to mind here is the Birkin. I'd love to have a Birkin. I hopefully will have one someday, but it would be a very, very long time, and it's just the same reason that so many other people don't have one, the price point and how difficult it is to get one in the specifications that you want. It would be a very long time before I would be able to justify the price of a Birkin. There are other things that if I had that kind of money, there are other things I need to do with that money that would be more responsible than a handbag. So I kind of answered the question, kind of didn't, because I could see myself buying one someday, and you're asking one I'd never buy. Susan Clark says, what is your favorite designer house, and what are your top five bags in your collection? My favorite designer house has got to be Louis Vuitton. I have the most from them. I find that they have the most variety and that is why they would be my favorite. And what are my top five bags in my collection? Okay, I've told you guys I bought a bunch of stuff in the spring and I'm spreading those unboxings out. I went through my calendar and I have an unboxing for every single Saturday for the rest of the year up until Vlogmas. 
that's how much I've purchased. They're not all handbags, some are small goods, some are luxury, some are contemporary, but that's how much I've purchased. And it's a little difficult to answer what my top five bags are currently in my collection because some of those would be bags you guys don't know about yet. Some of the obvious ones would be my Turenne that's always up there, my Chanel reissue that's probably the number one. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to answer like that and keep you in suspense. Robert Simmons, what is your dream car if you could have anyone in the world? Well, my dream car is a classic car. My dream car is the 1957 Corvette. And I think I saw this in Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. I feel like that's the movie it's in. It's in one of his videos, videos. It's in one of his movies. I would love to have that car. I had a classic car before. My very first car was a 1963 Ford Fairlane. If I ever got another classic car, it would have to be a second car and not my primary car. And I would have to have a safe place to store it. Like I'd probably need to own a house or have a garage that I'm renting that's secure because I wouldn't want to have it at an apartment complex where lots of different things could happen to it. But that would be my dream car. Oh, beautiful. Kathy Tatry says, hi Autumn, just wondering where do your fur babies sleep at night? Well, Roxy hasn't joined me right now for some reason. I think she's waiting for breakfast, but I have Baron right here. He's sleeping next to me in my chair. That's where they sleep is right next to me. Baron is always right up against my back in the bed. Roxy is usually more at my feet. She doesn't like being enclosed, I guess. And they both sleep under the blankets. Alleycat321 asks, could you do a fragrance tour video or talk about your favorites in your Q&A? Fragrances generally aren't really my thing. I would refer you over to Winnie B. L. V. for that. She is much more knowledgeable on fragrances and tries a lot of different ones. I have a very, very limited palette and tolerance when it comes to fragrances. My favorite is one that's discontinued now. It's the Louis Vuitton Cactus Garden. I wear that every day. I spray it on when I get out of the shower. When I'm home, I spray it on a couple times throughout the day. And then in the evenings, right before I go to bed, I spray Louis Vuitton Le Jour Se Lève. The Cactus Garden is a brighter scent and the Le Jour Se Lève is more of a deep citrus, like citrus peel, and I love those two and I haven't gotten sick of them. I do have a few more Louis Vuitton fragrances right here. The green one is Cactus Garden. This one is City of Stars, and then the one over here is Spell on You. Those two I like less. I like them initially. I like them enough to get them, but I really don't wear them. They just kind of sit there. They may end up in a vlog sale. Harmony Records Inc. Hi, she watches all my videos and comments all the time. I appreciate it. She has a great question. I have lots of questions that are about jewelry because I asked for questions on a video I was talking about jewelry. So this one says, I've noticed you buying luxury costume jewelry. Would you ever get into buying luxury fine jewelry, such as Van Cleef, Cartier, Rolex, as an investment that you can also wear, or even custom pieces that are solid gold or silver, etc.? Would love to know your opinion. The brands you mentioned are not brands I'm interested in. Van Cleef, Cartier, Rolex. Van Cleef, the only thing I'm really familiar with are those little floor Lorette things, the clovers. I don't like the design of those. Cartier, really, I'm just sick of hearing about Cartier. Everybody gets those love rings and love bracelets and the just on clue and stuff. And I don't want a nail wrapped around my wrist and I don't want a bracelet that I can't take off. And I don't want a ring that's just a band with some engraving in it. Isn't that what it is? Or does it have actual screws in the ring too? I don't know. Either way, I'm not interested in those designs at all. I'm also not interested in the price points of them. And I'm not interested in having jewelry that everybody else has. I don't mind, and not everybody else, but like everybody else on YouTube, it seems like, right? Because in real life, it's really pretty rare. I don't mind having other bags that lots of other people have, like the Speedy and the Neverfull, but with jewelry, I like my pieces to be more unique and more personal. I've also learned from watching Jill Maurer's channel and all of her jewelry videos that those kinds of brand names, at least this is my takeaway, this isn't something that she said, but my takeaway is that those kinds of brand names aren't really like in the jewelry community, the people who know, those aren't really the high brands. Those are just the ones where their marketing has worked really well. And now I'm really boiling it down there and oversimplifying, but those names don't equal the kind of quality that you might get from another brand, whether that's materials or design or whatever. 
and you can certainly get much better value for your money from other brands. Custom pieces in gold or silver, absolutely. I'm definitely interested in custom pieces. I don't have anything in mind, but yes, pieces that are more unique like that, that's more my thing. Texas Shopper Girl asked, do the wolf jewelry boxes, which is these two boxes behind me, prevent your silver jewelry from tarnishing? I did not know the answer to that, so I looked it up and it does say on the listings for those that they do. And I'm not exactly sure what it is that keeps them from tarnishing. I don't know if it's that it keeps them unexposed to oxygen because they're in an enclosed box. I don't know if there's some kind of anti-tarnishing chemical or something inside in the fabric. I'm not, I don't know, but yes, they claim to be anti-tarnishing. I need to polish my jewelry and then we'll see. I've had silver in there for a long time that doesn't seem to have tarnished and they're not pieces that I've taken out and worn as often. So that does seem to be true. Leslie Craven, hi Leslie. She watches a lot of videos and comments too. She says, I noticed most of your jewelry is purchased new from all over the world or as gifts. Have you ever purchased jewelry pre-loved? This was actually my favorite question of all the questions I received because it made me think the most. I hadn't realized pretty much all my jewelry or pieces I've bought new. I've not really considered pre-loved jewelry. I've looked at like the real real at some Tiffany pieces, but I've never bought anything. I'm certainly not opposed to pre-loved. I have purchased some vintage pieces, some of the Native American pieces that I have. So that probably counts. And if I was to go pre-loved, that's probably what I would be looking for. Svetlana Sanchez asks, are you willing to sell some of your jewelry pieces, in particular the Gucci earrings? I have recently really downsized my collection. I got rid of almost everything that was cheap costume jewelry. And I'm focused more now on the nicer pieces that I have. The Gucci earrings, I have two pair of Gucci earrings. I have the hoops that are the anger forest, and then I have the little ones with the green straw strawberries, so I'm not sure which ones you mean. The Anger Forest, I probably would be willing to sell. I do have a vlog sale planned. I was supposed to do it over the summer and ended up being out of town most of the summer. Never really had time to do it. At some point this year, I should get around to it. It might not be until the week of Thanksgiving because I have that week off. We'll see, but those earrings may be in the vlog sale. There will be some other jewelry in there too, some Swarovski. I'm not sure what else. Eva Flores asks, how long have you been with Paul? You said a couple years back, you're not really together anymore. I just wasn't sure how to describe it. I think Paul and I met in 2008. We've been friends since then. Amy asks, where do you think you'll be and what will you be doing 20 years from now? And is Paul included? 20 years from now, is similar to the 10 years from now that Yoto was talking about, so I'll talk about that in my next video. If Paul is around, I expect that he would be included. Daniel has a few questions for me. Hi, Daniel. Question one, do you have plans to visit Paris? He says, Paris and I were made for each other. I don't have plans to visit, but that's one of the places I would like to go. Paul and I have talked about doing another trip to Europe. We've only been over there once and it was to Italy. The idea would be France as the main stop. Um, certainly including Paris, also driving around the countryside, maybe going up to Germany to visit Mary, and hopefully getting over to England to visit Gwenny. I have mixed feelings about Paris though. I feel like it's a place I should go. It's not necessarily a place I want to go. Does that make sense? Because I don't plan to go there and do the shopping, but I feel like I should go there and go to the Hermes and the Louis Vuitton and all that. I'm really more interested in just walking the streets, looking around, and eating some of the food. Question two, with your back issues resolved, are you now a Birkin woman or a Kelly woman? Uh, Birkin still, yeah. I, you know, I started out being all for the Kelly. I still love the Kelly, but I've had the Birkin and Kelly lookalikes, and I've learned from those that the Birkin is more practical for me. Question three, do you have specific plans to punish Yota for not being perfect? Not specific plans, but I punish her privately a little bit every day. Kaylee Carroll asks, any new bags or jewelry you're wanting to get and anyone you want to collaborate with that you haven't yet? I would love to go to New York. I used to live there and visit Cassie Thorpe now that she's there. It would be fun to collaborate with her on something, maybe a shopping vlog, I don't know. But I'm also really intimidated to do that because as much as I love Cassie, some of the other YouTubers she's had in her videos, they're much more like her, I think, than they are like me. And they just seem far cooler than I have ever been and ever will be. 
and Cassie as well. So I don't know if anything like that would ever happen. I don't know that I would be a really good match for her audience either. I know there's a little bit of overlap, but I think her audience is probably looking for something different than my channel. Any new bags or jewelry you're wanting to get? I'm gonna talk about that in my next video too, the bag part, what my wish list is looking like right now. Jewelry, I do have a couple pieces in mind. One, I want some kind of turquoise ring and I don't know what exactly I'll know it when I see it. And I also want to add more turquoise necklaces. And I have some things in mind for that, but the ones that I want are gonna be really expensive, like a couple thousand dollars. And I don't know that I'm ready to drop that on a necklace right now. Even though I knew it would be worth it and I dropped that on bags and I don't know. I just have to find the right one and I haven't come across it yet. And that would be pieces with a lot of silver and multiple stones, not just like a pendant. Terry Fromm asks, would you ever consider becoming a school administrator? like an assistant principal or principal? And the answer is a definitive no. I have never been interested in that, not in the plan at all, not something I will ever be doing. Last question is from Celestial Blue Celeste. And they say, so many people on YouTube are quitting due to social media fatigue. Others are dialing back the amount of time they're on social media or setting stringent time limit. Do you see yourself staying on YouTube and other platforms for many more years? Thanks. YouTube is really the only platform where I'm a creator. I have an Instagram account, but I don't really use it. I do plan to stay on YouTube. I have no plans to cut back or to quit. I really enjoy it. It's a nice creative outlet. And it also brings in extra income to support my luxury habit and other things. There are certainly times when I get tired of it because I have two full-time jobs and it takes a lot of time to do YouTube on top of that. I don't have a lot of free time because of it, but it's something I really enjoy and I've learned to strategize, film ahead, edit ahead, get up at three or four in the morning to be able to make it happen. And it works for me, so I'm good with it. That brings us to the end of this Q&A. Thank you guys so much for your questions. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate that they're interesting questions and about a variety of topics. I hope you're doing well. Hope to see you back here next time. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.